Hi, I'm toge uh, together with Al Myo Min. He is the executive director of Equality Myanmar, an organization for the rights, human rights and LGBT rights. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. I would like you to tell us the latest situation now in Myanmar. Well, since the military coup on the February 1st, every day there's a street demonstration. And young people took on the street and also called for democracy and fighting against the military coup. But military on the other side used indiscriminately violence against the peaceful demonstrators. So up to now, there are more than 450 people were killed by the military on the streets and about 3,000 people were arrested. And some of their leaders and activists are on their warrant arrest and they are hiding or they are fleeing the country because situation is very unstable. The NLD led the committees representing the, the people parliament set up the interim government, but this is, you know, at the beginning to fight for the legitimacy against the military coup. So, you know, and that's an everyday daily, daily uh, street demonstrations and the killing and shooting into their houses. And as a result, many young people sacrifice their life, including the infants who are shot by the military on the street. Um, Mr. Ong Myo Min, uh, you were a student leader in 1988 revolution. And um, could you tell us the difference now? Well, you know, I was a university student when the 1988 uprising happened. Now I'm an activist, this is a time different. But you know, the, in 1988, people started the uprising, a uh, military stage a coup. But now it's, you know, military stage a coup first, and then people demonstration on the street follow after the military coup. So this is the big difference. Um, then during the 1988, we have very limited information in and out of the country because there's no Facebook, there's no uh, information technologies and citizen journalists during the time. So the military in 1980 totally controlled the media outlet. This is state-run media, radio, and television. But now, you know, the world is watching. The, the world is knowing what exactly happening in our country through the social media, through the citizen journalists, and through the other journalists, the media people who are, you know, risking their life to get the footage of the people. This is the second, you know, differences. And um, the military took the stage to the coup um, in 1988 easily. And the, the movement stopped right away after the coup. But now it's been already, you know, more than 50 days after the coup. The military cannot get any legitimacy at the international level. And also they don't get any support, you know, um, from the people of the countries. We are doing, you know, different strategies. One strategy is the peaceful demonstration on the street, showing that we are determined to fight for democracy. Second one is a civil disobedient movement, namely by the government servant who deny to, de deny to attend the office and cut off all the military structures. That one is a legitimacy by the international. So the other three strategies we are practicing right now, which is quite different from the 1988, which was only by the strict demonstration. Uh, could I ask, because we he heard that uh, there are lots of um, uh, ethnic milice groups in your country, and we heard that three big of them, including the Arakan army, uh, said, uh, give, the, give kind of an ultimatum to the uh, junta leaders that they will join and help the people on the streets. So uh, what is the situation on that side? We have, you know, many ethnic uh, armed groups um, around the country who are fighting against the central military government before, 
and also fighting against the one-party system. Military wisely used divide and uh, divide and rule policies. They divided the ethnic groups, and you know they run the they rule the countries. But now you know the military uh, cannot control the unity of the ethnic groups, and many ethnic groups show support uh, by launching some kind of me, uh, military strategies within their territories, like in Kachin and Karen areas. So this is a showing solidarity with the people demonstration in the cities. And again, like you mentioned, three remaining uh, armed groups, Arakan and also other armed groups and other one other groups, you know, they said, you know, they could not tolerate anymore because the military did not give up killing the people. So they are thinking to join their other ethnic armed forces to give a military pressure or military intervention when situation is getting worse. So this is the you know unified message to the military who is ruling the country in legitimately. So there's an groups show that you know they are support to the to their people and people continue call for genuine democracy and bring the people back to the people, bring the power back to the people. So this is really quite different from the 1988. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned it, but maybe we can underline it that this time all Myanmar people from different ethnic and religious groups are against together uh, to the military regime, isn't it? Yeah. You know, this is everyone may be different in ethnic background, social status, and the classes, but everyone, most of the people, you know, um, you know they are calling for to deny the military dictatorship, and we don't want any others, uh, any more slavery under the military boots anymore. So it's not, it's no more about only the National Democracy League and Aung San Suu Kyi. It's about democracy, you mean? Yes. You know, there's, you know we, are, we, are, we may be different during the election who we voted for. Some people voted for NLD, some people voted for the ethnic groups, but we have one clear message. We want the federal union without the, you know, um, the power of military in, uh, in the government. How, so far, how do you see the reaction from the world? Because uh, at the beginning, as far as I see, the West was a little bit uh, cautious to say anything, but now they join in implementing some kind of um, embargoes and things, but all those are enough or not? How do you see it? And China, can you also mention about how the China is doing because it's your neighbor? We received some, for some extents of support from the Western countries who we always you know, support the struggle of democracy in our country, namely UK, US, Canada, Australia, and EU. You know, they, they already um, declare or announced their targeted sanction against the military and their families because we are calling three cuts, you know, international support, cut the funds, cut the weapons, and cut the impunity. So they are already, you know, uh, doing some kind of economic sanctions, targeted sanction against the military and their foreign investment and call for the unembargoes. But at the same time, our country is neighboring with China. China is always, you know, not on their, our side. They are more, you know, keen on siding with the business and economic interests in our country. So China is always, you know, uh, blocking some kind of, you know, intervention initiated by the West. And yesterday, there's a closed door UN Security Council meeting, and particularly discussing the issue of, near, issue of my country, Myanmar. But China say that they don't want to see any intervention, international intervention on Myanmar, and they hope that peaceful solution will bring back to the country into the normal situation, that we don't believe it. So unfortunately, China is not our side, 
but other countries are taking some kind of you know um, uh, interest and also support to stop all kinds of their support to the military and not recognize the military as a government, but it is just a coup and denounce, strongly condemn the use of violence against the peaceful demonstrators. And uh, in how, how we can, as uh, international people, audience can help your struggle? Well, you know, um, people in our countries are fighting against the military, they are taking risks. So, you know, please support by all means possible. It depends on the country. The first one, you know, more is support. And, you know, to let our other world and the country people know that what is actually happening in Myanmar and how the people are courage, you know, to call for uh, democracy and human rights. It's a kind of solidarity. At the same time, you know, you make your call to your government not to do any business or any support to the military. And also, you can also send a letter to the UN Human Rights Commission, Security Council, and then, you know, making public of the situation in the country to make a unified and also, you know, um, united platform for action to stop or, uh, you know, uh, to fight against the military regime in the country. And my last question, you mentioned the interim governments newly founded. Um, is there any way they can be active um, or be in a negotiation with the military people? I mean, is there any chance you see now for a peaceful way of negotiation or something like that? Well, this inter interim government is, um, is composed with the elected MPs of the last elections. So they have a mandated by the people to act as an interim government. And they are opening all, more, all means possible to stop this kind of thing. But you know, um, so far, what the military has done to the people by killing, arresting, torturing, you know, that kind of crime is beyond the negotiation because they are acting as a criminal against the international humanitarian laws and international criminal, you know, laws. So they deserve the international justice and the criminal court is deserved to welcome this kind of military. So people don't want to see any, you know, um, majority of the people don't want to see any negotiation. What they want is a calling the international um, criminal court and also right to protect, responsibility to pro protect intervention into Myanmar. So, but, you know, we are also, you know, it is possible to, to, to carry out during that time, but, you know, the, the interim government will find a way how to stop as much as, or as soon as possible. I said last, but this is last, really. I'm sorry, um, you mentioned the armed groups, uh, in working against the military in their regions. Is there any chance that they took their arms to, into the cities? Uh, and what might happen if so? Well, you know, we have more than uh, 20 armed groups. They have their own territory. They said that this is their territory. So they have a limited um, territory they can mobilize. And also we have, you know, and they have an individual, you know, organization. What we want is that the Federal Army, composed of any, you know, uh, armed groups work together and you know, support their, their groups uh, or activists inside the country. It's not so easy, but, you know, we really wish to see that, you know, Federal Army combined with the all ethnic group come together, agile with the demonstrators, and also protecting and defending us for the demonstration and fight to overthrow the military. Aung Myo Min, thank you very much and do take care. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Very nice, uh, very nice meeting you. Türkiye'nin sivil, bağımsız, özgür ve çoğulcu bir medya ortamına ihtiyacı var. 
Medyaskop 20 Ağustos 2015'te bu ihtiyacı karşılamak üzere yola çıktı. Ama yolumuz uzun. Bu yolculukta bize Patreon veya YouTube'un katıl butonu üzerinden katkıda bulunabilirsiniz. Destek verin, sizinle güçlenelim.